is truly a metaphysical election. And I know you're probably wondering what in the world is a set talking about. This 2024 presidential election is really a huge global ritual that's taking place right before your eyes. How do I know? How do I know that this is what's happening? Okay, what you have to do is you have to look at a person's name. Remember, there's a scripture that says there's power in the name. And that's true. So if you look at the two top candidates, you have Donald and you have Kamala. Trump, if you look at him, he is literally the representation of the current patriarchal system that has been ruling and dominating this world. How do I know? His first name is Donald. The word Donald literally means ruler of the world, or it also means world mighty. It's derived from the county word dumno, which means world, and vol, which means rule. And he's running on a slogan that says, make America great again. Therefore, he is the personification of patriarchy and all that it entails. Mr. President, first, I would like to say a belated congratulations for retiring Joe Biden, at least yeah. from the uh, campaign. Yeah. So how do you keep Republicans positive and not buying into kind of the negative publicity that they're saying? I think she's a worse candidate than him. She's far more radical left. She is uh, younger. I mean, she's 60 years old. A lot of people, I didn't realize she was 60. I thought she was a little younger, uh, but she's 60. Uh, she is uh, talking a big game, but her game is pretty bad. I mean, she was the border czar. She's trying to pretend that uh, she wasn't. You know, it's an amazing thing that's happened, too, because we did well, a long time ago. It's an evolution, Mr. President, that, yes, she, she you know, was more progressive in 2020, but yeah. that she's moved to the middle on a number of these issues, and they're making a concerted effort to show a, kind of a new Kamala, Kamala 2.0. In politics, when you start off saying something, that's where you are. And she was for defund the police. She was for open borders. She was for having anybody come in. Now I notice that they're actually saying they want to have immunity for everybody that came into the country. Now, well, and they want to have citizenship. They she, want she said that, and she said that she knows that Kamala Harris, she assumes Kamala Harris would support that. That means citizenship for 10 everybody. million, 15 million, or 20, 20 million? Yeah, or 20 million. What would that do to the country? Uh, destroy the country. It's already. I mean, it's in such bad shape. Our country has never been in a position like this, in addition to which we could end up in a third world war, okay? But we have 20 million people that have come into the country. I would say by now it's 20 is probably going over that number. We have another four months to go, but really it's another five months, five and a half months to go. So that number is going to increase very substantially. They're pouring in and they're coming from prisons. They're coming from mental institutions, insane asylums. I always say that's a step above a mental institution. And we have record number of terrorists coming into our country and only bad things are going to happen. Nothing good is going to come out of it. If you look at him, he has immense wealth. They have literally been showing you all of his womanizing ways that he's done for the past three years. He also has many racist followers that follow behind him. He has a very dominant demeanor and he's extremely narcissistic. So again, that's that patriarchy. That's the man on top, that male energy, how they have everybody worshiping this male being, this male God. That's what's been ruling the planet. That's what has conquered the globe. Now, if you look at his competitor, her name is Kamala. It is so good to be with you this evening, and I say that as a proud member of the Divine Nine. And when I look out at everyone here, I see family. And you know, we all, we share a vision for the future of our nation. Ours is a vision of a future in which we realize the promise of America. And aren't so many of us empirical evidence of the promise of America? A promise of freedom, opportunity, and justice, not for some, but for all. In this moment, we face a choice between two very different visions for our nation. One focused on the future, the other focused on the past. Kamala actually means she of the lotus. 
and she was the last of the 10 Mahadvis or great revelations or manifestations, which is a group of tantric goddesses. And if you look at the goddess that she represents, her name represents, this goddess was a very favorable, very beautiful goddess that had a lovely golden complexion. She sat on top of a lotus in that lotus posture. She had four hands, two that would hold the lotuses and the other two held signs that grant blessings and gave assurance. So many people actually believe that Kamala was also Lakshmi. They're the same goddess. So she's literally the personification of that divine feminine energy. Now, if we go back and we begin to look at some of the ancient texts, there's a story that was called the churning of the Milky Ocean. Now, what do we live in family? We live in what? The Milky Way galaxy. So we know that they're talking about this star system. And in this story, according to the story, there was a warrior god, Indra, who had the task of protecting the world from demons that had long sought to destroy it with the help of Lakshmi, which again is Kamala. And he successfully accomplished this for many, many years. So they're telling you for a very long time, this planet lived in peace and it kept all the negative energy out of the planet. Well, one day he was gifted with a garland of sacred flowers by a wise sage. And displeased by the gift, Indra threw the flowers away in a show of arrogance. Lakshmi, or Kamala, who had been observing this interaction, was angered by his arrogance and rudeness and decided to leave the world of the gods and enter into the Milky Way ocean as punishment. So she left the planet. Without her power as the goddess of success and fortune, the gods lost their blessings and demons began to seep into the world, causing everything to grow darker. The people became greedy and the gods were just simply ignored. Now let's think about what's been happening since patriarchy has been on the planet. All of a sudden they told you that all of the gods of old were evil. You only supposed to worship the one true God, which was this masculine energy. Everybody now has become greedy. Nobody helps anybody. You got homeless people living everywhere. And the planet itself has just gotten very scary, very nasty, very low. The women have been demoted to nothing but sexual objects and maids. That's what happened as more and more demonic spirits or low energies begin to fill the planet. Well, the story says as time went on, these guys begin to lose their power. And Indra came to Vishnu and begged for his help. Vishnu instructed Indra that he and the other gods must churn the Milky Way to return Lakshmi or Kamala to the surface and gain her favor again. Okay, so what does that mean? That all the powers are saying, look, the planet is going pot to piss. We have got to put the divine feminine back on the throne. The men have destroyed everything. So, in the ocean's depth also lay many treasures, such as the elixir of life and a potion to bestow immortality. These would all help them to rid the world of demons and restore balance. For over a thousand years, the gods worked together to churn the ocean for Lakshmi or Kamala and the treasure with little luck. Now, how long did your Bible say that Satan was released upon the earth? Therefore, his time is short and he's about to be kicked off the planet. Finally, Lakshmi or Kamala arose to the surface as a beautiful woman standing on a lotus flower along with all the treasure they had sought. With her help and power, the gods could finally defeat the demons that had infested our world and pushed them back into the darkness. So we know that this was all written many, many years ago that all these things were going to happen and were going to take place. That's why they tell you there's nothing new under the sun. Now, if you analyze this again, you know metaphysically they are obviously showing you that there's a cosmic battle that's ensuing all around us. As above, so below. So what's going on in the heavens as they talked about these oceans, now people are just realizing that outer space and around us, similar to an ocean, almost like a sea, the waters. They all knew this in ancient culture. 
So therefore, there are energies that are taking place above you, around you, and even inside of you. So this election is a very metaphysical election. I'm curious to see if the establishment is just using it for a ritual so that they can try to use it to stop the divine feminine from returning, which is what I suspect. Or if they're actually trying to work with the energies that's coming back onto the planet. Because as you know, if you understand time and how things work, a lot of times what magicians and people who are into this type of stuff will do, they will use and harness that energy for their own selves. Meaning that even though she represents the divine feminine, nine times out of 10, she's still going to go along with the establishment's agenda, whatever that may be. But that's them still flowing with the energy that's supposed to return. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't want to get into all the politics and what Kamala did in her past and what Trump did in his past because at this point it doesn't really matter. The key here is for you to look at it from a metaphysical standpoint and a metaphysical point of view so you know what time it is on the planet. And I did write an article to go along with this podcast. I'm going to put a link in the description box below. Definitely check that out. And don't forget, go out and exercise your right and vote. I'm glad I got my